Hey guys, welcome to part one of RC circuits, in which we are going to describe what an RC circuit is and uh, some of the basics of how they function. So first thing would be RC, what's it stand for? It's not remote control, it's resistor capacitor. And most of them also are going to have a battery in them, but whatever. Um, any circuit that contains a resistor and a capacitor is an RC circuit, regardless of exactly what the arrangement is. Now what makes RC circuits interesting is the fact that the current in them changes as a function of time. Sometimes it looks like exponential decay, as in uh, the case shown here, where if I move the switch to this position, the battery will start to push current around the circuit, and over time charge builds up on the capacitor, and then as it charges, the current becomes less and less, for reasons that we'll discuss uh, in a little bit, uh, until the capacitor is fully charged and the current stops flowing entirely. Other times, it's a little more complicated, where some components will have a slightly decreasing current over time or increasing current over time, uh, we will get to these more complicated ones uh, later on, not in this video. So just to start with, let's look at a really simple example of an RC circuit. This is what we will call a simple RC circuit because there are only two things that it can do. It can either charge, that would be in the event that we move the switch to this position and connect the battery to the other circuit elements, or it can discharge, and that would be in the event that we move the switch to that position. And of course it will only discharge if the capacitor is already charged. So let's first consider the charging position, where if I move it to, uh, to the lower position, current will begin to flow in the direction indicated here because of the polarity of the battery. Um, as time goes on and current, which remember current is charge per time, roughly speaking, really it's uh, the calculus thing, it's dq dt, all right, it's the rate of change in charge. As the current flows through it, because current is the rate of change in charge, the current represents the rate at which charge builds up on the capacitor. Now, the fact that current is the rate of change in charge and why that's significant for getting the interesting behavior of the current in this circuit uh, won't really become apparent until we write a loop equation. Once again, remember way back when, when we started Kirchhoff, I said we could use it to analyze any circuit. Any circuit, Mr. Eric? Yeah, any circuit, any circuit at all. And now we're going to use it to analyze an RC circuit. Now, in very basic terms, the voltage drops around that red loop that I've drawn would be, well, let's see, we gain some volts going in the direction shown when we go across the battery. And then the resistor is going to be using, I don't know, a certain number of volts, whatever that is. And the capacitor is going to be using a certain number of volts at any given moment. Again, whatever that is. And this is just in keeping with our conceptual understanding of how Kirchhoff's loop equation works, right? If this were, say, a 9-volt battery, well, at any particular moment, the resistor and the capacitor together would have to be using 9 volts. So maybe at some particular moment, the resistor is using all 9 volts. At that moment, the capacitor is using 0. All right, maybe a little bit later or at some other time, the resistor is using 7 volts. At that moment, the capacitor is using 2. Okay, so whatever those individual voltages are at some particular moment, they have to add up to the EMF of the battery. So that's really all I'm saying with this equation here. Now, according to Ohm's law, V equals IR, therefore we can express the volts used by the resistor as IR, and the volts used by the capacitor are given by our classic equation C equals Q over V, which solving it for V is Q over C. Now, if you're in 
calculus class, you might realize the significance of this next step. If you're not, it's not a huge deal, uh, for, for the moment anyway. Uh, I'm going to recall that the current is the derivative of charge. It's the rate of change in charge. And so we could write the equation uh, above as this instead. Now, if I know enough calculus and a little bit of algebra, I can turn this into an equation for the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. And with a little bit of work, I can also turn that into things like the volts on the capacitor as a function of time, or for that matter, even the current as a function of time, or the volts used by the resistor as a function of time. Now, I'm not going to get into the calculus in this video because that's just outside of the scope of what we need to get into. What I do need you to understand is the basic principles that underlie how RC circuits work and why the current changes as a function of time. And it all comes down to Kirchhoff and a few simple statements. Okay, so simple statement number one. As charge goes up, the voltage on the capacitor goes up. Okay, that's simple enough because this statement right here, right? If the charge increases, well, that's the numerator. If the value of the numerator goes up, then the value of the whole term goes up. All right, so if the voltage on the capacitor, or sorry, if the charge goes up, the voltage on the capacitor increases. Great. Second important bit. So the voltage on the resistor decreases. All right. That should be reasonable enough based on what we discussed before with the 9-volt battery example, right? It's a zero-sum game. If the EMF is, say, 9 volts provided by the battery, as the volts on the capacitor increase, the number of those 9 volts that remain for the resistor would have to decrease. Okay, so over time, the charge goes up, the volts on the capacitor go up, and therefore the volts on the resistor go down. All right, so you may be asking, what does this have to do with the current in the circuit? Well, according to Ohm's law, as the volts on the resistor go down, the current must also be going down. That stands to reason based on, again, this statement over here. If the volts on the resistor are going down, there's really only two ways that could, that could mathematically be happening. One is if the resistance is going down. Eh, no, it's not. That, that's probably not the bit that's changing, right? We're not uh, rapidly unplugging resistors or something. No, it's the current must be going down. Okay, and so that is why over time you will see the behavior that I described nearly at the beginning of the video where the current in the circuit is going to decrease over time. Initially, when the charge on the capacitor is zero, it uses zero volts. How comes is that, Mr. Eric? Well, be, just look at this, right? If Q is zero, this term is zero, and therefore the volts on the capacitor is going to be zero. All right, if that's zero, then the resistor is getting all of the volts. Okay, a little while later, though, let's say there's enough charge now that the volts used by the capacitor is, how about one? Okay, all right, if it's one, then the volts used by the resistor would now have to be eight. Again, this is assuming that it's a 9-volt battery that we're talking about. Okay, a little while later, let's say that this is now 2, and then this is 7, consequently. You can see where this is going, right? As the volts on the capacitor go up, the volts on the resistor go down. And since the volts are proportional to the current on that resistor, what that must mean is as the system, or as the capacitor charges, the current is going to go down. 
Now, of course, what's tricky about this is that the current is also the rate of change in the charge on the capacitor. So as the current gets less and less, the rate at which the charge of the capacitor changes decreases. And so uh, while you might think, you know, the capacitor is, you know, going to fill up, you know, at a particular rate, right? It's going to reach its maximum charge in some given amount of time. What we actually end up with is it technically is never fully charged. It's always going to be infinitely approaching that maximum charge that it could be reaching. All right, so to sort of recap what we should have understood so far, when the charge is zero, our loop equation simplifies to this, because this term is zero. And therefore, this is the initial current, is just EMF over R. If you like, you could call that I max is EMF over R. Uh, in other words, this loop equation is written sort of as though the capacitor is not even there. Just, just not, it's not there. Pretend it's not there. If the capacitor is not charged, it doesn't do anything. That's the magic of the loop equations, is if there's a term that uses zero volts, then you ignore that term. And so initially, it's just a very, very simple circuit where it's one battery, one resistor, all right, and therefore the current is just EMF over R. Now, of course, that's initially when the charge is zero. That doesn't last very long. So at any time later, the current is going to be less than EMF over R. Also, a long time later, when we reach the maximum charge, the current is going to be zero. The idea there is, again, remember, if the current is the rate of change in charge, well, if we have reached the maximum charge, then that means the charge isn't changing anymore. That would make the rate of change zero, all right, and therefore, at maximum charge, the current is zero. And so if you wanted to calculate what is the maximum charge, we could again go back to our loop equation and say, well, uh, if at the maximum charge the current is zero, this term disappears, and we simply get this. All right, now you might think that these two solutions are, I don't know, maybe somewhat trivial or something, or is this really all it consists of? And the short answer is no, this isn't all that it consists of. Um, but um, you will be surprised how often RC circuit problems come down to these two moments, where they will ask about the initial current, and they will ask about the final current. So the initial and final uh, are two very important moments uh, whenever we're talking about RC circuits. All right, now, what if we want to know the charge at some particular time? Well, for that, we would need calculus. And since I'm not going to make you do calculus, I'll just give you the answers that calculus would give us. So to learn about that, watch the next video.